Another key struggle that patients have told us about is that searching for information about CAM can be overwhelming. Most people don't know where to start or what information they can trust. There's sort of three things to consider when you're looking for credible sources of information. The first is to consider the goals, funding, and reputation of the organization providing the CAM information. Generally, academic, healthcare institutions, not-for-profit, government kinds of institutions will provide you the most unbiased information. You want to look for information based on randomized clinical trials or population studies. You want to look at the trial to see if the sample is similar in terms of your type of cancer, the stage of your disease, is it the same gender even of people, so that you can look at the, if the findings are generalizable to your own situation. You want to exercise caution in using information from marketing sources, such as product websites or journals, aimed at the public. Um, generally, people who are marketing a product may not um, pre be presenting the most un unbiased um, view. Next to word of mouth, the internet is the most common place where people with cancer look for information about CAM. We pulled together a handout on the various credible CAM websites that you may find useful. At the end of the presentation, I'll give you my email address, and you can email me for the handout if you like. But for now, I'll give you the top three websites that I use for searching for CAM information. The first is the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, www.mskcc.org. It has a really excellent, easy-to-use database of natural health products for clinicians and patients. There's excellent patient education handouts. And they also have up-to-date information about CAM research and clinical trials that are ongoing in that area or of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. The second website I use is the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database, www.naturaldatabase.com. And basically, this is the CPS for natural health products. The CPS is the drug handbook that conventional healthcare providers look up drugs in, and this Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database is the drug handbook for natural medicines. It's generally only available through libraries or healthcare institutions, so this is where your pharmacist can be your best friend and can look up um, various natural health products for you. The third website I use commonly is the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine www.nccam.nih.gov. This is the website I go to when I'm looking for clinical trials on CAM therapies. Um, because it's under the auspices of the Na National Institute of Health in the U.S., there's links to many, many databases for ongoing and completed clinical trials. And if the clinical trial has been completed, there'll be a report of the findings of that clinical trial on the CAM therapy for you to access. So in closing, I'd like to leave you with five key things to consider when making CAM decisions. The first off is to reflect on your own attitudes and beliefs about cancer, conventional treatments, and CAM therapies. We would hope that your decisions about CAM would be based and fit with your beliefs and values. Number two, consider how you prefer to make decisions about treatments. What is your decision-making style? Are you the type of person that defers to convention and would prefer to have your healthcare provider um, provide the information and you rely on their information? Or are you more of an information gatherer and like to make decisions by yourself? You need to figure out your decision-making style and tell your healthcare team so they can best support you in doing that. Number three, Use the resources that are available to you, including your family members, friends, and fellow cancer survivors. These people want to help you, and sometimes they need direction, and they can be really useful in your search for information. Tell them to go off, search for something, bring the information back to you. That can help with, the, uh, with your energy as well. Number four, understand that there are many available CAM therapies and providers. Take your time researching your options and choosing therapies that match your beliefs and values. And number five, recognize that CAM is a rapidly expanding area of research. Stay current and informed. I hope that this brief overview has given you one or two things you can take away and think about and maybe even act upon. I hope you'll continue to talk about CAM with your various healthcare providers 
and I'll do my part to help prepare the oncology healthcare providers, at least in BC, to become better prepared to support you in making informed CAM decisions. I thank you, and I now look forward to learning from Cheryl. Thank you, Tracy, for that great overview. I'll now go into more detail about naturopathic medicine, which is a prime example of this type of complementary healthcare. So first of all, naturopathic medicine is an approach that utilizes methods and medicinal substances that stimulate and work with the inherent healing power of the body. Several principles guide our work, which I'll go into in a moment. But first, I want to place us in the context of the overall health system in Ontario. We are licensed primary care practitioners offering complementary health care to anyone wishing to optimize their current level of health. This is done using gentle and natural approaches, sometimes mainly for the purpose of symptom relief, other times with the aim of preventing further problems down the road, and in general with the goal of increasing a person's sense of well-being at any point in time. Our training includes four years of undergraduate schooling in the sciences, usually a pre-med stream, followed by another four years of training at an accredited naturopathic college or university. And there are only two in Canada and four in the United States. So basically, we get a similar foundation in the sciences as medical doctors, but then go on to study nutrition, botanicals, acupuncture, and homeopathy instead of drugs and surgery. As funding continues to become available for researching the effects of natural substances and methods, we are accumulating a database of evidence for these modalities. And this helps us to know why we do what we do, to know when and why certain approaches are contraindicated, and to avoid interactions between drugs and herbs or certain nutritional substances. And while naturopathic medicine is not included under OHIP, the Ontario plan, many extended health benefit programs do cover naturopathic treatment. British Columbia, on the other hand, does include naturopathic doctors under the provincial health plan. So I'd like to come back to naturopathic principles. I mentioned them a minute ago, and it's our principles uh, that are what differentiate us from other approaches, even more than the substances we use to treat. Now, the very first principle I referred to in the definition of naturopathic medicine, and that is the healing power of nature. And this acknowledges the inherent ability of the body to heal, and that our goal is to stimulate that process. The next principle is first, do no harm. And basically, this refers to the fact that we use substances that work gently and that minimize the risk of side effects. Now, that's not to say that there are no potential side effects, and it's important to be aware of that. Another principle, a really important principle, is treat the cause. And what this means is we seek to identify and treat the underlying causes of the illness whenever possible. This isn't always so easy, but it's the ideal. Another way to look at this is to say that we try to avoid simply covering up symptoms or suppressing the symptoms. Next principle is treat the whole person. And in general, the length of a visit with a naturopath is longer, on average 30 minutes or even more. And thus, we have the opportunity to explore the mental, emotional, social, or environmental aspects of what is going on. And this is important because our bodies aren't machines, and all of these factors do come into play in our state of health. Another aspect of this is that we treat the individual. So in other words, five women could come in with a similar complaint, and they might receive different remedies for their treatment depending on the particulars of their condition. 